Hi everybody, so there's a new wind turbine out. Actually it's not a new wind turbine, it's been around for a couple of years but the media is picking it up and there's a lot of attention on it and it's called the Aero Mine. I did a video on this a couple of years ago. The Aero Mine is essentially a wing shape, actually it's an F1 wing shape. The air passes over the wing shape, creates a low pressure zone which sucks the air through some pipes and of course in that pipe is a turbine and that generates your electricity. Clever idea, directing the wind and using that. But if you want to make it, it has a little issue and that is making the wing shape. Now you can make a wing shape if you spend months doing it. And if you're going to produce tens if not hundreds of thousands of them, well you can spend months on a mould and then you can cast off as many as you want just like worn out underpants. Not a problem at all. If you want to do only a couple, of course, you've got a bit of an issue. It's going to take you ages to do this thing. So I was mulling it over about building one, and I was thinking, OK, this one's got to be built within certain criteria. Anybody can do it, readily available materials, and it won't take you a month of Sundays to achieve a result. Of course, we can only use the concept of the aero mining, that is, Mining the air, directing it over a turbine. And that's what I thought about. I thought, okay, how are we going to capture the air, direct the air, and push it over a turbine to generate? Now, this actually strikes me as a bit of a mystery. I have done a video on it before, and it's Erasmus Darwin's horizontal windmill. The inventor for Josiah Wedgwood and was used in the potteries, but when you search for it, it's surprising how little information there is. It takes a, a lot of effort to find it, and not that many people know about it. Few people do, but it's almost as if it's a lost secret. It's certainly not something that people think much about, but the idea is genius. I mean, Erasmus was a genius of his time. He's the guy who's responsible for the Ackerman linkage, which is what we use in the steering of cars today. And he invented a whole host of things, and he was a... a intellectual of that time. He died in 1802, incidentally. So he invented this horizontal windmill, which has never seen the light of day, uh, has almost been completely forgotten and has some great attributes about it. Because, of course, putting up a windmill in our lives, in the cities, is a nightmare of planning, and it's very costly to build the actual support. The windmill itself can be relatively cheap, but the tower you have to build can be just ridiculous. Now, Erasmus thought to himself, OK, if we have to have, build a tower, why not make use of it? So what we're going to do is we're going to build a bigger version of the Erasmus uh, Darwin windmill and see if we can't use that new style of generator in it. Now, I am blessed with a table saw, some plywood and a whole load of patience. What we're going to do is cut this 3mm plywood up into strips to make the flaps for the flat vents. Okay, so I've cut it up to a whole stack of flaps. There's 96 of them, and I've got myself a whole load of dowel. And what I'm going to do is glue the flap to the dowel. So when you made a whole stack of these, and I made 96 of them, what you need is a couple of bits of wood with some holes drilled in it. And then you slot these into the holes. And when you've pinned a top and bottom bar on, what you'll end up with is this, which can just flap open and close. <laughs> Okay, I've got another six of those to make. So I've got myself a bit of plywood, 12 millimeter exterior grain. I need to chop off the corners to make octagons. I need two of them, one at the bottom, one at the top. So I have my two octagons, one with a hole in and one without a hole in. This is gonna be the bottom. Now we can fit our flat vents that we made, making sure that when we fit them, they flap towards the inwards, not the outwards. <laughs> That's it finished. Now, we put a bit of wind on that, we'll get them to flap. <laughs> Which is exactly what they're supposed to do. 
When the wind hits them, they flap open. The reverse ones flap shut and stop the wind going anywhere but up. And that's what it must do. It's going to go out that hole at the top. Now, when you build a wind turbine, you have to build a tower. And of course, all of that tower is completely wasted. It's just money you've spent to get the wind turbine up there. Here, what we're doing is using the area of the tower to capture that area of wind. Now, the hole in the top is that big. So that's the swept area of the turbine that I can put in there. And so the power is going to be related to the swept area of the turbine and the amount of wind going over it. We've got that swept area. It's very much bigger, and of course that wind, even despite the leakage, is going to be more because we have a bigger area. So one thing we can pretty much guarantee, this thing is going to be much more efficient than just a wind turbine by itself because it's capturing more wind area. It must be. Of course it's going to be most cost more cost effective because you have to build a tower anyway, and here you're building a tower that's going to do something useful. And it also brings me to mind what we did in the video when we talked about the Crazy Channel in English, about when we're looking at the logic of something. So Aeromine is the one that brought this up. Now Aeromine claimed that they are more efficient than a solar panel, and you have to laugh at that, because what do they mean? I mean, if they're doing what I've done, which is basically a big tower that captures that area of wind, but they're looking at the footprint, and sure, they're going to be more efficient because you can build this as high as you like. I made this 1.2 metres so I could work on it, but we could build this 3, 4 metres high. No worries at all. It's going to be more efficient than a solar panel if we only pay attention to the solar panel footprint because it must be. And there's a degree of that that goes on. If you don't define what it is that you mean, then any inference you make from it is always going to be suspect. So you have to define what you mean, and, and I don't, don't really pick up the aero minor defining it particularly well, but you might want to look into that and let me know, I'd be fascinated. And of course, yet one more thing about this, is that turbine sits like that, not like that. So like that, of course, it isn't going to chop birdies into little pieces. You're not going to be able to see it because it's laying that way, and that tower looks like a bit of an architectural feature, so chances are you stick that on your roof and nobody's going to moan at you. So there's lots of reasons why you would want to look at that. As I say, I thought the aero mine was a little bit challenging to make. Not really, it just would take a lot of material, a lot of time, if all you're doing is making a couple of those um, wings that they use. This one, we just got some plywood and chopped it up on the saw. Anyway, next one, Get a turbine in there and let's see what it actually does. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it inspires some thoughts in your own mind. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.